Because she hated my guts from like laughing the at laugh, the joke. The one laugh? So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, wow. well, you'll definitely hate my guts from making out with your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what? How could they do something like that? Are you serious? What a thirsty in that fur. Not good. She's absolutely dead to me. That's because she died. I'm Sterling Mulberry. And I'm Blair Payton. And welcome to Bad Bad Behavior, Behavior, a morally questionable podcast where two unqualified friends, two unhinged comedians, determine once and for all what is good and what is bad. Hello and welcome to Bad Behavior. I'm Blair Payton. And I'm Sterling Mulberry. In each episode of the podcast, a guest shares a morally questionable story and we decide if they were in the right or the wrong. Now, Sterling, I don't know if you noticed when I was doing my little introduction there, but uh, my voice has a very masculine cadence to it, which even though I am under the weather, I kind of love. I'm presenting mask today. <laughs> well, that's amazing. And, Thank and, you. And, uh, an amazing thing to be presenting on Blair. Our season finale episode of Bad Behavior. Can you believe it? Season two coming to an end. I was doing the math Mm -hmm. and I was just like, wow, we've done a lot of talking (laughs) over two years. (laughs) I was like, have I ever talked this much in my life? And I was like, actually, no, this seems about right. Yeah, it seems about right. Now, Blair, we're coming to the end of the year. Almost Thanksgiving, which will be tomorrow if you're listening. I hope people are listening to this episode at their Thanksgiving table with their family. Because, you know, there's nothing I hate more than a quiet dinner. See, I love that because what I was thinking (laughs) is like, how sweet would it be to have like the whole family in the kitchen cooking, not talking and listening to this episode. But I think (laughs) having it around, like playing it around the dinner table makes much more sense. It provides discussion afterwards, especially in a year that can be seen as divisive, specifically (laughs) with politics. You need something just kind of neutral and light to debate about. And that's the show. That that is the show. (laughs) I mean, we talked about this last episode of our, like, you know, our years, but I'm like, I gotta work on my New Year's resolutions already. Do you know what I'm thinking about? I'm gonna say this breaking news. I think I might have to go back to the vision board. I think I have to do another vision board. I didn't do a vision board this year, and I worry that then caused my year to have no vision. My year was so stupid this year. No offense to the year. I mean, I'm I'm grateful for all that all that happened, but it was pretty dumb as a year in total. And I think it's because I didn't do a vision board. Whereas the year before, also a terrible year, but a lot got done. You know, a lot was good. Sure. But um, no, that makes that makes sense as to why your year was bad. But everything came true on the vision board. <laughs> you know. So earlier this year. We had, you know, we talk about vision boards pretty frequently. <laughs> yeah, we do. More so than I think any adult should. Oh, of But course. with that said, earlier this year, I wanted to make a vision board because I had a lot of goals and I was like, I need to, I need to put that out into the universe. Yeah. Um, because I feel like sometimes they don't listen and they prefer pictures as, as opposed to my voice. <laughs> they. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I always want to make sure when I'm doing a vision board that I'm doing it correctly. So on my desktop, I have screenshots of the correct layout on how to do a vision board. But they've just been sitting there for a year. And I was like, I should delete these. But then I was like, no, I should do it. Maybe when I come to New York for um, a mere 48 hours this um, winter, we can make our vision boards together. I do take the easy way out and Google the pictures I want to use. And you print. Print them off Mm -hmm. at work. At work. And then I cut them up. (laughs) And then I put them on a poster. Because I feel like you need that that hand. what, What if someone at your work finds your printed vision board photos and is like oh who printed out like a dollar bill or who printed out i think that's the least embarrassing one because the one i printed (laughs) out that's pretty embarrassing is the so what i've always wanted to have as uh, a homosexual is a nice butt because that is very revered in my my god of course and i don't have one and so i printed out it was a picture of it was a Marvel superhero, but it had been doctored to have like a really badonka donk butt. Uh-huh. And so I printed that out and put it on my vision board because I wanted to have that butt. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I mean, it's really good to get clear as you're coming to the end of the year, you know. I guess yeah. my question for you is, and I was talking to my friend about this last night, is do you think that there's still a chance for the year or do you think we're kind of it were wrapped? I think yes. But if you're trying to get a romantic relationship in time for Christmas, I say no. Hallmark disagrees, of course, but has anything ever exciting happened to you in December? Definitely things have happened. Like yeah. a couple of years ago, dad got me a hoverboard for Christmas. <laughs> he was like, oh, I thought this would be good. Like, you know, so you don't have to walk on the streets. You can just use it to get to work. And I'm like, dad, 
I'm not using a fucking hoverboard. <laughs> Wait, what did you do with it? Do you return it? Well, here's the thing. I don't like to be rude. But I opened the gift and I was just like, oh, my God. I pretended to be really excited. <laughs> sure. Which my sister later was like, I thought that was really weird how excited you were. And I was like, Heidi, do you think I'm actually going to fucking use this on the streets of New York? I will hurt myself. <laughs> he didn't even give me a helmet. <laughs> and the thing that's even funnier about it, before I returned it, I was so, I was like, well, let me try it. Maybe I'll love it. So in my parents' living room, because it's hardwood floors, mm -hmm. I got on it and, <laughs> and like you put slight pressure and it goes and I went off of it. I was like, no, nope, returning this. I didn't have the receipt. And I told the woman at Best Buy, I was like, listen, I'm about to be 40 and my dad got me a <laughs> hoverboard for Christmas. Can I please just get store credit? <laughs> and did they so, give it to you even though you didn't have a receipt? They did. Wow. <laughs> If you if you arrived to dinner with me and you came in on a hoverboard, I would laugh so hard. Honestly, that would be the highlight of my December is laughing so hard at you on a hoverboard. Well, I guess, you know, as we're thinking of our own vision boards, is there anything where, you know, man, if, is there anything we're, you know, bringing in for our final month of December that we're hoping something exciting could happen that we want to say out loud? I mean, I'm always trying to give up soda. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I'm like, what can you bring into your life? And you're like, well, I'm going to get rid of something, actually. Okay, you're going to give up soda. Well, if I could just stick to it. <laughs> okay. That gonna, would be a great You're going to give up soda in December. I'm not. Okay. Let's be real. Well, I do want to say, you know, as as the season comes to an end, I'm so grateful for my, obviously you, my dear co-host, but also all of you listeners for tuning in week after week. Obviously, we'll take a little break, hibernate, you know, for the new year, yeah. come out like Botox. butterflies. Yeah, <laughs> we have to go get full faces. <laughs> um, so, you know, while we're away, feel free to listen to old episodes, send to friends and family. Blair, any any final any final thoughts on, you know, wrapping up the season before we have our guest on? No, I'm just I'm amazed at how time works because <laughs> it feels like we've only been doing this for a couple of months, but it's been two full years. <laughs> So that it feels only, insane only to me. In two months. Yeah. That's so So funny. I'm just amazed at how time works. Yeah. And that's And good... if there was a button to make it a little bit slower, that would be fine. I'd love to slow down aging. Like I'd love not even the physical parts of it, but like I'd love to still be younger. Mm -hmm. But I've been so uninterested in the past couple of years of my life. I think the years I'd like to speed up a little bit. They haven't been that exciting, but I don't want to be any older. Does that make sense? I'd love to like speed up to a more sure. fun part, but I don't want to be any older. But then when you get to the, the fun part, you can slow it down. So you want yeah. it to be like manually operated is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, I would love some manual operation with time. Um, well, Blair, we have an incredible treat for our season finale today. You know her from her absolutely hilarious videos on TikTok and Instagram, as well as doing shows all around New York and the country. Please welcome our guest today, Yvette Segan. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. And thank you for showing up as your real authentic self and one of the cleanest guests we've ever had on the podcast, if I can and say And thank that. you for saying that. <laughs> and thank you for saying that. I was, I'm was i doing my darndest to be clean. Now, just to let the audience know, you did tell us right off the bat that you had just gotten out of the shower. So your hair is a little moist. Uh, what I would like to know is what shampoo are we using? Okay, this actually is controversial. I'm okay. still using Diva Curl. Oh, which I don't know. If is you, that controversial? It is because there was a person that came out and said that it was making their hair fall out <laughs> a few years ago. Huh. And then I just was like, well, that's never happened to me. Um, and there was like a mass exodus from Diva Curl where everyone was like, I can't use Diva Curl anymore. It's making my hair fall. Like everyone's hair is falling out. But I really think it was an isolated thing <laughs> or if it – or – Maybe I just, like, it just doesn't do that to me. Yeah. So, or maybe it does. Maybe I, like, have a lot of hair that I could have that I don't have. Yeah. I, I don't know. Mm. Um, I've never, like, missed any hair, so I just keep using it. I do know what Diva Curl is because, not to brag, I did work at Ulta Beauty stocking the shelves. <laughs> and because I was so type A, they loved the way I stacked their stuff because it was very organized. Okay, great. Sorry, I don't mean to brag. <laughs> Look at me. Take it over the spotlight. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is your home also very neat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about this later, but I went on a date with <laughs> this guy who smelt um, well, you're not great. Well, you're spoiling. <laughs> well, I won't say – I won't give you full details, but All I right. will say when we were making out the entire time we were kissing, 
I was like, I hope his smell doesn't get on my couch. That's okay. First of all, what you just said mm-hmm. is my worst nightmare. As like, I if if I smelled bad to somebody, I would like that, and they didn't t- <laughs> like that's that's horror. That is mm-hmm. horror story. And I live alone, and like you know how you get used to the smell of your own domicile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My other biggest fear is that someone would come into my home and be like, it smells bad in here and not tell me. I and have I that wouldn't same fear know. too. I'm constantly, I also have in unit laundry brag. And so I'm like, I run the laundry machine so frequently that I think my whole house just actually smells like laundry all the time. I guess the question is like, I have encountered people, dear friends. And um, actually, one of my best friends, she came back from – this was not a long time ago – but from a semester of college, and she smelled – I hate to be like this – different. Can you describe the smell? <laughs> okay. I can't for her for her own um, – Safety. Right. For her own safety. But basically, what was happened is this. She came back. We got in the car. In my head, I'm like, huh, my dear friend smells different. I've known her my entire life. So, like, I know. Then I revealed to her, um, hey <laughs> – you finally smell back to normal. Basically, I say that. And then I say, mm-hmm. what what has been going on? Then she did reveal that she hadn't done laundry or washed any of her clothes for an entire semester and had just been Febrezing them. So I think we figured out that – but you have to remember this was college. This is college. Okay. We have to, oh, we have no. to cut her Mm-mm. a break. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. Ooh, that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> but what oh, do you my say God. if you're what, – what do you say? Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Yeah. I – would just like ask them a lot of questions and be like, mm. how are you like, what's your routine like these days? Like, how are you shower? Like, I don't know. Or I'd like <laughs> observe them very closely and try and figure it out because it's, you can't just like let that go. Like, that's terrifying. <laughs> but it's hard. But you guys are saying like, you would hope your friend would flag that for you. And it's like, it is well, difficult to know how to navigate that if you were to fly. I say. will, no, I will <laughs> say, I will say that your friend made a decision <laughs> that they knew was risky yeah. in not cleaning their own clothes. So, like, they kind of, it, it's like a little incumbent upon them. Like, if you're cutting corners that heavily, then, like, you know, there's like certain risks that you're running. I think another thing <laughs> we're kind of overlooking here is. What was her mental state like at this time? Was she depressed? That's kind of – you-, you know what? I'm yeah. going to say this. Actually, her mental state was amazing. She was having the time of her life. I think it was just like she was just partying a lot and having a really um, fun time in college. So it's like, well, why would I like – Bathe? <laughs> now, because it's our season finale episode, breaking news, huge. I know you're screaming. How have you felt about 2024 overall? Um, 2024 was uh, the best year of my life. Really? To be honest. Yeah. Oh my God, I, that's amazing news. Yeah, I started my own business, I guess is how I think about it. But like, you know, I mean, my entire like social media thing happened like pretty much in 2024. Went on tour a little bit doing stand up. I filmed a web series that I wrote with my writing partner, Dan Carney. That's going to premiere in early 2025. Okay, so huge. That's something you to look forward to. Where are you releasing the web series on? So that's going to be on YouTube, youtube.com, heard if you've it. heard of a it. famous platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys should really check it out. There's some great stuff on there. Can you tell us what the premise is? Or? It's like a very topical sort of like 20-somethings, 30, early 30-somethings in New York, in Brooklyn, and their little tomfoolery. It's kind of like sitcom-y. It's okay. very, very fun. Now, I feel like, as you said, 2024 has been a good year. I feel like I have seen you in a lot of videos online that have done amazing, that make me laugh, laugh, laugh. Now, in a lot of your videos, I think it kind of like, would you say the premise is like some of them are like a little bit of tips tips on love or tips on dating, and then it obviously kind of maybe goes in like a humorous direction. I would push back on the tips part of that. Or not like tips, um, but being like, have you, has this happened? Or like, have you, you know, not like tips. Yeah. Tip is a terrible word. I'm sorry. Advice? Maybe like commiseration. Know. So true. So true. People, okay, sometimes people DM me and they're like, hey, like, can I get advice on this thing? Because mm-hmm. this is like what you – and I'm like, have you seen anything? <laughs> like, I am the least qualified person for advice. Like, I cannot – no, don't listen to me. I have had zero success in this area. Like, this is like the least – like, professionally, I feel like I really got a good – I got a good handle on what's going on there. Yeah. Romantically, mm. do not ask me anything. Like, 
I think that's why I like talk about it so much because it's like the one part of my life that I'm like, I just don't get this at all. How often are you getting people asking your advice? Not like a ton, a ton. But like one time someone came up to me at a show and was like, should I get back together with my ex or whatever? And I was like, I mean, you got to do, listen, my advice for anyone which is not good, um, is go with your gut, you guys. Mm. Like, you just got to live your freaking life and, like, live, laugh, love. Also, totally. maybe get a therapist. Can I just – speaking about the therapist thing, so someone – I won't say who, but in my family, I've been trying to get them to go to a therapist. Mm-hmm. So we were talking on the phone, and they were talking to me about this issue that I'd heard repeatedly. And I was just like, hey, listen, I think you, I think you should talk to a neutral party about this. I think it would be very beneficial. So they were saying, oh, well, I'm I'm on my way to therapy now. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's great. And so, like, every time I would talk to them, they're like, yeah, I'm on my way to therapy. Well, I was talking to someone else who was also related to this person. And they were like, they're not going to therapy. They're going to physical therapy. <laughs> oh. They never corrected me once. They were just like, yeah, I'm going to therapy. <laughs> yeah, so just get clarity. Anytime someone says they're going to therapy, what kind of therapist? You got bamboozled. <laughs> did they they really did that on purpose i feel <laughs> oh because i kept bringing it up i was like so what did your therapist say they're like oh they were they were really supportive and i'm like <laughs> that's great okay great that's hilarious also to like be lying but like not really lying is like very funny I know you say that you maybe don't have a lot of advice to give, but unfortunately, we are going to be asking for it today because we have a game we play on this podcast called Heaven or Hell, where we are today going to present some different scenarios for you. And you're going to decide we're kind of doing a kind of a new version of it today that you're going to decide if these scenarios are heaven, hell or purgatory for you. You'll also kind of say how you would proceed in this situation. Okay, Blair, do you want to kick us off? You're grabbing a drink at a dive bar on a first date. You sit down at a table, and there's an old pizza box. Your date opens it, sees there's a few slices of pizza inside, and says, Whoa, can't believe someone just left this. I'm definitely bringing this home. I'd be like, oh, you're a crazy person. Unless they were like, um... Okay, but what if it's like hour three? And the date, and you like the date? I mean, it's fine. You're you're close (laughs) to the end. But it's like, what do you do? I did not know what to do in this situation. This, I mean, a big reveal. This just happened to me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this was pizza that was somebody else's pizza. Untouched slices in the box. Mm-hmm. And in earnest, he was like, I'm going to take this home. Yeah, he didn't end up doing it, but I was so shocked because it wasn't pizza from the venue. So I brought it into the bar. And then he was like, but what could be wrong with it? And I was like, well, I – and then he was like, I mean, they didn't touch these slices. So there's no germs. And then – I was like totally. They could have breathed. And on I it. said that you're Did you risk. okay? Did you see him again? No. <laughs> no. Did you kiss him? No, no, no. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> this is like the interesting thing about like being a woman and possibly about being a person, but I can only speak from the perspective of being a woman. When somebody confidently says to me, You're wrong, mm-hmm. I go. Oh, I'm probably wrong. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I'll, like, in my soul, I'll be like, I'm right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is weird. You're being insane. And then they're like, no. But, like, when somebody confidently pushes back on you, you're like, and especially if they're, like, a guy, I find, I'm like, maybe there's something that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe yeah, there's yeah, something yeah. that, which is what you're doing right now. So we're saying hell? And now, and you would have proceeded <laughs> like I had. So that's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, listen, I've I've sort of backed out from a lot less. <laughs> sure. Okay. You arrive at a first date of someone you met on a dating app and quickly realize they are 10 years older than they said they were on their profile. That's it? <laughs> that is it. Did they, did, they, did they reveal it to you or how did that come about? Okay. <laughs> so what happened? So I'm 41. Mm-hmm. And when I met this person and it said that they were 42, I was like, oh, wow, they look weathered. <laughs> and then I was like, do I look this weathered? Is this what I look like <laughs> at 41? And then I started getting very insecure about myself. So he never, you guys never discussed so, that he had put that? No. Oh, no. okay. 
I know. No, you need to like, confront people and then <laughs> demand an excla- explanation. You know what's funny about both of these examples that, <laughs> is that in both scenarios, the other person was lying or being weird confidently. And then it, so much so that you guys both second guessed your own judgment so heavily. I did have another friend that did date someone for over um, five months and then realized he was 13 years older than he said he was. Yeah, that's horrifying. <laughs> she had met all of his friends and family. And I was like, whoa, is that guy not so scared that at one point someone's going to reveal like, you're really old? <laughs> but she had met him in person. So it's like, well. What are people's end games on these lies? I'm like, that's like so crazy to me. I know. I'm like, it's going to come out. And I'm like, that's a way crazier decision. But he just kept being like, oh, girls don't go for me if like I tell them my real age. And I'm like, well, stop dating young, young girls. <laughs> Date someone. Well, right. There's and that. We're, we're extremely young. So it's like, you know, go a little bit higher than us. And we're okay. babies. That we're baby. happened to one of my friends, actually. Um, This guy, they matched on Tinder or whatever. Same thing. Like. She was in college. She was 18. He said he was in his like early mid 20s. He was actually in his early mid 30s, married with a kid with kids. Oh no. <laughs> like separated, separated, not technically divorced. Okay. So complete la- dating an 18 year old. That's disgusting. Girl. Well, oh. yeah, it's not good. It's not good. So this is a hell scenario, is what we're, we're <laughs> These are hell scenarios. <laughs> These are, but this is what I'm saying. Like, this kind of a lie is, like, so actually, like, really messed up. Like, that's, like, not – because, like, if you're willing to do that, that's, like, such an ind- indicator of, like, a way bigger personality thing. You invite someone over to your apartment on a second date, and they smell like weather. I know exactly what that smell is. Okay, yeah. But you didn't like – not good weather, not good weather. It's like – well, so the way I think of it is like when I was a kid and I would play outside and then I would come inside, my grandmother would be like, ooh, you smell like weather. Go take a bath. <laughs> so what I'm hearing – what I'm hearing is that the, like the weather weather smell is not that bad. What I think what you're actually reacting to is that he doesn't have pheromones that you want. Mm, totally. There it is. And like when you are like really like – when your hormones are matching up with somebody else, totally. it yeah. doesn't matter. If they're sweaty, you'll be like, get that's true. over here. <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. No, I one time after I got out of a relationship, I like immediately started dating this other person because I just needed to like re- rebrand. Totally, I needed to yeah. like find myself. I was like, I wasn't wrong in this relationship. I'm going to prove it, you know? And yeah. so I yeah. started like dating this other guy. And so I like pushed myself to like, you know, move forward with him, even though I was like not super into it. And I remember the first time we hooked up, I remember thinking, well, first of all, like that thing of like the first person you hook up with after your ex, you like, you're just like comparing them to your, it's just like such a bad. Yep. <laughs> and then, um, and it was like two weeks after a breakup of like a year, like mm. he, the, my ex and I, it was like really bad. But mm-hmm. I remember thinking he smelled like pickles, like vinegary <laughs> <laughs> in some way, not mm. in a bad way but just in like your i think what my body was just like rejecting the fact that he didn't smell like the person that i was yeah. in love with sure sure and yeah. like that yeah. and i was just like Ugh. and then i dated him for three months anyway <laughs> and i gonna say and then i dated him for three years okay three months no oh, it's fine no three months <laughs> three months and then we then one day we looked at each other and we said do we like each other and then the answer was no Whoa, okay. you said that at the exact same time? You're like, and on the It was kind of, of like a jinx. Like, <laughs> neither one of us. I, I think I, like, really, I was with him once, and I was like, I l- like you. Like, I couldn't mm. even, like, say it. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, what are we doing? And I was like, so true, King. <laughs> but I think the more important question is, what is your relationship now with Pickles? Oh, that's oh, true. Well, I like, I like Pickles. I mean, I got used to his smell. Mm. You can power through it and then get <laughs> 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 and then it's fine you stop smelling it yeah but um but i wouldn't recommend doing that you shouldn't do that okay our last one today your date retells you an over 10 minute long john mulaney joke word for word first of all hell hell that is i am a stand-up comedian <laughs> i would also interrupt and say that's a john mulaney bit why ha, ha, i've heard it before i would stop them well he was like this have you heard this john mulaney bit immediately launched him before i was like oh, of course and then just kind of he, well he was like john, john mulaney has this bit and then he like just went for it so it's not like again he was claiming it as own, oh, but it was just like of course no this one and no offense it wasn't even that funny of a, of a bit I was like, yeah. Which, I which was the bit, yeah. It was which about one? the kid in the audience. 
That's that doesn't make sense to retell. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never believe this. Shout out. It was Pizza Guy. But you know what's funny too? The answer is too, like with those pe- even with the pizza thing and with the John Laney story, if you really liked that person, <laughs> no, totally. You'd just be like, yeah. Yeah, they told them really long. Like, that's, oh my that's my person. Or you'd be like, you'd be like, they're a fan of comedy, so it's amazing we have interests. I love how much of a free spirit he is. He like <laughs> wanted to eat pizza. He's so like he reduced, reuse, recycle. <laughs> well, now we've come to the portion of the podcast where you have a story today where it's hard to tell if you're in the right or the wrong. And Blair and I are etiquette experts. So we're going to decide if you exhibited good or bad behavior. This was during COVID. Okay. Okay. So we were all losing our minds. Totally. Totally. I was young. I was young. I was like 22. And there was this guy that was hot Mm -hmm. who I knew. Mm -hmm. He was talking to this other girl. They were not exclusive. Okay. But – Basically, they were – like, it was like there weren't a lot of – it was like slim pickings mm-hmm. around. Like, it was COVID. Like, there weren't a lot of people. And, like, cl- they were committed to each other in whatever way. But they weren't, like, technically exclusive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, He was kind of like a – he was kind of like a young idiot. I think he was, like, 20. He was younger than me. Okay. <laughs> and he was, like – um, he was kind of being an idiot to this girl. He was, like, not committing to her on purpose, like, flagrantly so. We all knew that. She was so hot. She was so whatever. She was a, like legit a model. There was one day he said something to her that I laughed at. Or he said something to the room that was like not super nice. Mm. I was there and with a bunch of people, I laughed at the the thing that he said. Mm-hmm. But it was like not clean. Like it was like, okay. me, like a little – it wasn't like girl's girl of me to like laugh. Okay. Mm-hmm. But also I was like, look at who this guy is. Like if you're dating him, like it's – he's not hiding who he is at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was like a player. He was young. He was just like doing his thing. He was like a frat boy. She then pulls me aside. I'm thinking she's going to like – she needs a girl opinion. <laughs> and she gets mad at me uh-huh. for laughing. Uh-huh. She gets mad at me. Okay. You need to break up with him. <laughs> like, you don't take that out on me. Right, 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 like, right. yeah, I laughed. That was wrong. But you need to, you need to, like, go to him and, like, t- like really, mm-hmm. like, have that conversation with him. But, of course, I, like, apologize, whatever. But then yeah. she was, like, kind of mean to me after that. And I was, like, I don't really, like, get what's going on and why I'm, like, part of this at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, a couple weeks go by and – or some amount of time – and I was like mad at her. And then um we he and I did connect. But I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I mean, it probably was wrong. I don't think I still stand by it. Like they were not exclusive. They were seeing each other, but that's still as a woman, not good. Not good. And I was like annoyed with her. So mm-hmm. then I did an equally terrible girl <laughs> move by allowing that to happen. Uh-huh. I did not pursue him, first of all. I did not pursue him. He pursued me. Mm-hmm. And it was like a one time we didn't go too far. And then it was just like a we just made out. What what was the thing that he said that won you over? Or can you even say? Um <laughs> he didn't really we were just like in a hot tub together for a long enough. <laughs> and then it just like Okay. And then I said, I don't know if we should do this. And he was like, Yeah, let's let's do it. That's so that's so like of a movie. I can't believe people really say that in real life. I don't think anyone's ever said, I don't know if we should do this. Well, because I, I really was like, I want you to think, I mean, we were like drinking and stuff. So like there's that too. But I was like, I want you to like think about this. If like this is like you're the one and I don't know what your relationship is. Like I don't know what your relationship status is. But I also at that point was like normally I would feel loyalty to the girl because I'm a girl's girl. Looking back, I never will ever, ever do that again. That was like the worst. I have not done anything close to that since. See, I hate to believe that in this scenario, I'm like, this isn't that bad. I was like. (laughs) Did the friend find out about it? The girl, I still don't know. That's why I'm like. Did they last a while after? Did they ever become? I That I also don't know Mm -hmm. because it was like a summer thing. So I'm like, it's some, like, it's not even like they didn't live near each other. He was going back to. Somewhere. <laughs> you're young. The friend, are you still friends with this person or has it just kind of drifted? Oh, I don't know any of these people anymore. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> okay. 
It's all fine. It's like, it's, uh, you're it's like, get this, in here, girl. You guys are acting like this is like that. But I just like, if I wouldn't want her to ever be like hurt by anything. Sure. Like, I no, feel, I of course feel like guilty. And she already hates my guts. So I think that that's where I was like, well, because she hated my guts from like laughing the at laugh, the joke. The one laugh? So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, wow. well, you'll definitely hate my guts for making out with your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> So totally. it seems like your reasoning was like, that's dumb for you to be mad at me laughing, but like, let me give you something to be really mad about. Is that is yeah. that correct? You know, the worst part of me <laughs> is that this is a thing. I think it's like a human thing, but we can get into this. If someone is mad at me for something that's unreasonable, then I'm like, oh, well, there's no reason for me to be better than what you think of me. So then mm. I do, because I'm I like, that. I can't, if I'm the best version of myself, then you still are, you're already hating me. So I'm like, well, then what loyalty do I owe you beyond mm. that? So then I'm like, well, now I'm just gonna, yeah, do whatever I want. Now, did this did this little scenario kind of you know it was obviously tough lockdown COVID nineteen we all remember. Did this kind of little fling kind of help you know get get some spark in your step to like keep you going during COVID nineteen? Or did it kind of make it worse? Like, were you like, okay, I had a kind of a crazy night and like I can kind of live on that for a minute? Well, it didn't make the pandemic worse at all because I was just like riding so – we were just like fighting for our lives to like have fun and like feel something and like experience human connection. So totally. it was like that – at that moment, I think it was like what I needed in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think the place that it was coming from was like a little bit like me being annoyed at this girl, which I – that's the part that I'm not proud of in hindsight where I'm like – because, like, hands down, I would not have done it if I thought that – if I liked her more. And that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the moral conundrum is, is it bad to not be maybe a quote-unquote girl's girl when the girl in the other – in the, the other girl in the scenario sucks? Yeah, but she – yeah, because she ungirled girled first. It, sure. She's, she crossed the girl line – by getting mad at me instead of her – the guy she was with, which is actually the source of her anger, which, like – is a mistake that I'm sure we've all made, but I thought that we were better than that. Of and then course. I was just like, girl. Hmm. Okay. And, said, and I didn't know her very well either. Like I was I was more friends with him than I was with mm. her. Oh, okay. So there's that too, like the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like, but and I've talked about this many times. I'm like, it's hard when you're in a scenario in which say the the laugh of it all at least. When you're like living in a different reality than someone else. Like you're like, I can't even like we can't even have a productive conversation. Like I'm just thinking of that because like you're living in a world or like your reality of the situation is so different than my reality of the situation. You know, that it's like we can't even really like get to a conclusion because you're like the way you're angry at me versus him. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like you can try to talk it through, but like we're both living in different realities and like we're not going to be able to get what they the need to see as a physical therapist. <laughs> if she sure saw, if, I think all of us, all three of us in this situation, if we had all just gone to physical therapy together, I think none of this would have been a problem. Out one time. <laughs> like instead of like making out with each mm. other behind each other's backs. Like yeah. I think that that's well, this the is issue good. here. This is good. Blair, what are you thinking? You know, listening to the story, you you did say that she ungirled first, right? She ungirled first. And you and you weren't close to this person. Plus, we were living in a in a crazy time back then where we didn't know if we were going to be alive the next day and if we were ever going to kiss someone or, yeah. or, or go to the movies. You know, a lot of things were up in the air. And so you were taking a chance. And, you know, I've used this analogy before, and I think it fits here perfectly. When a plane is going down, they say you got to put the oxygen mask on you first before you take care of other people. Mm. So you were taking care of your carnal needs in that bubbly time <laughs> Gosh. and said, hey, I need some lip action from this gentleman. And that's what you did. You were you were catering to yourself. Not this, not this, dare I say, a B word. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. I was going to say a model. Mm. Yeah. So I'm saying it was good behavior. <laughs> Because you're the driver of your own body. Thank you. I also think it's worth saying that she certainly has come out on top because she's like probably more successful. I mean, she's she's just like really hot and cool and mm. fine. I mean, I don't. Do we know who this person is? No. Okay. <laughs> so I'm saying good behavior. Okay, you're saying good behavior. Okay. You know, I think I'm I'm leaning with Blair on this one today. 
Um, yeah. You guys that, also don't have to say good behavior just for my benefit. Like if you <laughs> if you feel like this is bad behavior, I feel like this is bad behavior. That's what I, I'm, I'm telling you right the now. The reason I don't feel like it's so bad, to be honest, is because <laughs> the ages in the story are so young. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. we got a 20-year-old involved in this story. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. no frontal lobe. COVID-19 is is raging. They were not in a committed relationship. You also weren't friends with her. So I think like, obviously not amazing. The worst behavior ever? No. People are doing far worse all the time. So I think with those things combined, she also didn't find out they didn't end up blasting. She's doing amazing as a, mo- a famous model on the runway. You know, it's like, <laughs> I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah. I don't think you should feel as guilty. I thought the story was going to be so much worse. Yeah. She's like, like yeah, Sterling why? said, as a model, she's probably getting screwed over all the time. You know? <laughs> In my, no, exactly. Like, this is the least of it. In my mind, this is actually hands down the worst thing I've ever done. Like, this is oh like what gosh. I think of when I'm like, we have to get you. We have to get you out there. You're gonna have to be doing way worse things. Yeah. This is this is child's play. I think. I don't think this is so yeah. bad. Yeah. Because I just feel guilty that like you know because it was all like we were all in a close like circle of like social circle mm. and I just felt like I shouldn't have done that. Totally. So you have officially been deemed good, good behavior. behavior. We know it can be a little scary to try to like come up with an acceptance speech on the spot after getting such an amazing award. So we have written a little acceptance speech for you today um, for you to give that will pop into the chat. Thank you so much for this award. This week has been really hard, really hard. Jay Leno took a tumble down a 60 foot hill while on his way to get a chicken Parmesan. Yeah, I didn't know that that happened. Okay, (laughs) and look, It's going to take a really long time for both Jay Leno and this nation to recover from that. So in such a dark time, I'm glad that my behavior can be a shining light, Mm. a glimmer of hope that the future can be brighter and that hopefully one day Jay Leno can finally get his chicken parm. Thank you so much for this award. This week has been hard. Oh, wait, hold on. I I put it in there twice. End of message. Finally get his chicken parm. I say it twice. It's like a TikTok. You just keep playing it. It's like yeah. <laughs> Jay Leno. I'm so sorry to hear about Jay Leno. And thank you for bringing this to my attention. Of course. Definitely yeah. take a look. The internet is saying they don't believe he took a tumble down a hill to get a chicken parmesan. But um, jury's out. He do- he isn't looking well, but he did get that chicken parmesan. So um, anyways, but can you tell listeners about Union Hall December 5th? Yeah, Union Hall December 5th. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more shows in New York around, I think, Manhattan also. There's one coming up, Top Secret, in um, January. Amazing. So, yeah, but Union Hall December 5th. Tickets are already, like, halfway sold out. So um, to run. Yeah, so you better you better slide in there and get those <laughs> those baddies. If you can even look me in the eye after what I just confessed on the podcast. <laughs> I could not feel more guilty, but maybe – you know, but you should I, now because on a on a national podcast like, such as ours, you have been <laughs> deemed a a, a beacon of hope mm-hmm. for other people yeah. who are horny. <laughs> horny and twenty two. I yeah. guess maybe in hindsight, like when you're twenty two, just let yourself be horny and just know that that's like what it's going to be. Yeah. You just have to be horny and twenty two. Now, before we wrap up, can you tell listeners where they can follow, find you, and then if you have any other things you want to plug, the web series, anything like that? Yeah, um, just follow me on Instagram for all my updates. Um, I have some really exciting things coming up in the new year, so um, keep an eye out. I'm really excited to share all of the things I've been working on. Um, It's all going to be very funny and exciting, and um, definitely I'm also trying to go on the road and do stand-up, so if you want me to come to your city, go to evetsehan.com and put in where you are so I know to come there. And that's our show. Thanks so much for listening today. We absolutely hate to do this. We hate it. But it would mean the world to us if you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you get podcasts, rate and review. Follow us at Bad Behavior NYC on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks again for listening. And remember, whatever your moral status, we are always here to judge. Bye. Bye. Do you think that was good?